accounting for bad debts. An entity that sells on credit assumes the risk of some customers will not pay their accounts. When an account receivable becomes uncollectible, the entity sustain a bad debt loss. This loss is simply one of the cost of doing business on credit. So, ibig sabihin yung mga entity na nagbebenta or nagsa-sale on account or sale on credit, expose sila sa risk na ang may possibility na ang customer ay hindi magbayad sa kanila, sa entity. And once na yung accounts receivable na yon is hindi na siya makokolekta, becomes uncollectible, yun na yung tinatawag na bad debt loss. And bad debt loss is an expense account and isa sa mga cost of doing business on credit. Two methods are followed in accounting for bad debt loss. We have the allowance method, number one, and number two, yung direct write-off method. Allowance method. The allowance method requires recognition of a bad debt loss if the accounts are doubtful of collection, meaning kahit doubtful of collection pa lang ang accounts receivable, under allowance method, magre-record na tayo or magre-recognize na tayo ng tinatawag na bad debt loss. There are three methods of estimating doubtful accounts. Namely, so ito yung mga methods nag, ng pang-estimate ng mga accounts na doubtful of collection. Number one, the aging of accounts receivable or the statement of financial position approach. Number two, percent of accounts receivable or the statement of financial position approach. And percent of sales, the income statement approach. Kaya siya naging statement of financial position approach, yung number one and two. Kasi ang pinagbabasehan is accounts receivable. And ang accounts receivable is a statement financial position account. So kaya siya statement of financial position approach. Yung number three, kaya siya income statement approach. Kasi yung nakabase siya sa sales. And sales is an, in, is an income statement account. So, kaya siya income statement approach. First method, aging the accounts receivable. The aging of accounts receivable involves an analysis of the accounts where they are classified into not due or past due. So, sa aging of accounts receivable, bine-break down ang accounts receivable. Kinaklasified siya into not due or past due. May nababanggit na past due. Ano ba yung past due na ito? When is an account past due? The phrase past due refers to the period beyond the maximum credit term. Okay, for example, para sa for further discussion ng past due, so meron tayong example dito. Sale of merchandise dated July 1, 2019. 10,000 pesos, terms are 2 over 10 and over 30. Kailan ang sale of merchandise? Let's say ito ay sale on account and Kailan siya masasabing pas due? Ang terms niya ay 2 over 10 and over 30. Meaning, kailangan siyang bayaran within the 30-day period. July 1, 2019 ang date of sale. So, ang credit term niya or ang maximum credit term niya would be July 1 to July 31, 2019. Between this period, hindi pa due yung accounts receivable. Ang due date ng accounts receivable is July 31, 2019. That is 30 days from the invoice date which is July 1. Meaning, kailangan bayaran ni customer yung accounts receivable na to on or before July 31, 2019. Let's say August 1, 2019 na ngayon and still yung receivable dito ay uncollected. Ibig sabihin, one day past June na siya. Lag past na sa due date. And ang count ng araw is from current time to date of due date, which is ito, July 31. From July 31 to August 1, that is one day. Let's say August 31 na ngayon, that is 31 days past June na. Kasi from July 31 to August 31, that is 31 days. Let's say September 30 na ngayon, that is 61 days past June na siya. Assuming na hindi pa siya nakokolekta noong September 30, 2019. September 30, ah sorry, from July 31 to September 30, 61 days ang interval. Ang pagbibilang ng date is doon sa due date hanggang doon sa present time. 
Okay, continuation tayo ng aging of receivables and meron tayo ditong sample problem. The balance of entities accounts receivable amounted to 1.2 million. The following data are summarized in aging the accounts receivable at the end of the period. So, yung 1.2 million is kinalasify siya and kinalasify siya according sa kanyang past due. So, meron ditong not due, may 1 to 30 days past due, hanggang more than 1 year na past due. So, ito yung mga amounts. Binrate down yung 1.2 million according sa classification or depende sa haba ng past due accounts. And meron dito tayong estimated uncollectible. Ibig sabihin, 1% ng mga not due accounts is 1% dun is possible na uncollectible. Sa mga 1 to 30 days account na past due, 2% dun is possible na uncollectible and so on. The allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of 10,000 before adjustment. Determine the following doubtful accounts expense, allowance for doubtful accounts, and the net realizable value of accounts receivable. Okay, papansin nyo, the more na nagtatagal na ang past due, the more na mas mahaba ang past due, mas malaki ang percentage ng possibility of uncollectible. So, ang gagawin natin is kukumpitin natin yung, mga, yung doubtful accounts expense, allowance for doubtful accounts, and yung net realizable value of accounts receivable. Okay, so continuation tayo ng problem solving. Ang ginagawa natin ngayon is account, aging the accounts receivable approach. So ang gagawin natin is i write lang natin yung mga facts na available. So ito, ni write natin siya. Then yung percentage of uncollectible. Okay, kapag balance sheet approach ang gagamitin natin, lagi nating tatangga, tatandaan na ang accounts receivable times the rate, that would be the required allowance for doubtful accounts end. Meaning yung compute nating amount dito is yun na yung mag appear sa balance sheet as al allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. And lagi natin tatandaan na ang ginagamit na rate is yung percent of uncollectible. Laging uncollectible. Okay. Ang gagawin natin is kukunin natin yung required allowance for doubtful accounts and accounts receivable times the percent of uncollectible equals required allowance for doubtful accounts and 500,000 times 1%, 5,000. 300,000 times 2%, 6,000. 200 times 4%, 8. 100,000 times 7%, 7,000. 50,000 times 10%, 5,000. 30,000 times 30%, that is 9,000. And 50% times 20,000 equals 10,000. Okay. 5 plus 6 plus 8 plus 7 plus 5 plus 9 plus 10,000 equals 50,000 pesos. Meaning, pag gumawa ng balance sheet si entity, ang allowance for doubtful accounts end niya, ang mag appear ay 50,000 Pesos. So, ito na yung required allowance for doubtful accounts end. Ito na yung ending balance ng allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, first requirement is compute the doubtful accounts expense. Sa pagkukompute ng doubtful accounts expense, kailangan nating malaman yung allowance for doubtful accounts beginning or yung balance before adjustment. So, sa case na to, 10,000 pesos credit ang balance ng allowance for doubtful accounts before adjustment. So, from 10,000, dapat 50,000 na siya. Ito yung should be. Ito yung required allowance for doubtful accounts end. So, kapag nilagay natin siya sa T-account, allowance for doubtful accounts, meron siyang beginning balance na 10,000 credit. Ang allowance for doubtful accounts ay contra asset account. So, makikita natin siya sa balance sheet as deduction sa accounts receivable. Okay. Ang ending balance dapat ay 50,000. From 10, naging 50. Ito yung required allowance for doubtful accounts balance. Meaning, nag-increase siya ng 40,000 credit sa allowance for doubtful accounts. So, to record yung increase or yung adjustment, ang record sa kanya would be the doubtful accounts 
accounts expense debit 40,000 credit allowance for doubtful accounts 40,000 so na compute na natin yung doubtful accounts expense so ang sagot natin diyan ay 40,000 pesos doubtful accounts expense income statement account so Lagi natin tatandaan kapag balance sheet approach, accounts receivable times the percentage, yun na yung should be or yung required allowance for doubtful accounts. And so number one, ang answer, 40,000 pesos doubtful accounts expense. Okay, ang number two requirement sa problem is compute the allowance for doubtful accounts and and na compute na natin siya which is itong 50,000. So number two, Ang sagot ay 50,000 pesos. Ang requirement number 3 is the net realizable value of accounts receivable as of end of period. And ang net realizable value of accounts receivable is makocompute siya by the accounts receivable minus the allowance for doubtful accounts. Accounts receivable is 1.2 million Minus the allowance for doubtful accounts and which is 50,000. Therefore, net realizable value of accounts receivable for the end of the period ay 1.15 million pesos. So, nasagot na natin yung requirement number 3 which is 1.15 million pesos. So, sa paggamit ng aging of accounts receivable, Meron siya mga advantage sa pagko-compute ng allowance for doubtful accounts. Number one is accurate and scientific computation of allowance for doubtful accounts. Since na ito ay ina-analyze natin based sa kanyang past due, syempre, the more na mas matagal nang hindi nakokolekta ang accounts receivable, mas lumalaki ang possibility na hindi talaga makolekta to ni entity. Kasi habang tumatagal ang panahon, yun nga, mas lumalaki yung chance sa na hindi na natin or hindi na ma-recover ni entity yung amount ng receivable which is yun yung sinasabi na accurate and scientific computation of allowance for doubtful accounts and na isa pa niyang advantage is ang account receivable ay fairly represented sa balance sheet kasi accurate ang allowance for doubtful accounts disadvantage so meron din siyang disadvantage una yung violates matching principle Okay, ang matching principle is nire-recognize natin yung expense or yung corresponding expense for every sale of merchandise. And ito, since na kagaya nito, itong past June na 20,000 is probably sale siya, nung, sale siya nung mga prior period and yung corresponding expense niya is na-recognize lang for the current year. So, nababiolate na yung matching principle. So, meron tayo ditong Yung matching principle is para magkaroon pa kayo ng idea about matching principle is meron tayo ditong discussion under basic accounting ng matching principle. So, i-watch na lang yun kung gusto niya siyang i-recall. Ang isa pang disadvantage ng aging of accounts receivable is time-consuming if large accounts are involved. So, ito, time-consuming siya lalo na kapag sobrang dami ng accounts receivable ng entity. Pero sa current technology ngayon, so marami ng mga program and system, actually hindi na rin nasu hindi na siya disadvantage kasi kasi yun nga, kung manual na computation siguro disadvantage siya kasi matrabaho sa ngayon, marami ng mga program and accounting systems na nakocompensate na or na-avoid na, na yung time consuming kapag large accounts receivables are involved Okay, jump tayo sa second approach which is Percent of accounts receivable. A certain rate is multiplied by the open accounts at the end of the period in order to get the required allowance balance. Meaning, may certain rate lang na multiply sa total accounts receivable para makuha yung required allowance balance. Okay, required allowance balance ang sinabi kasi balance sheet approach ito nakabase sa accounts receivable. Okay, dun tayo sa second approach which is a balance sheet approach percentage or percent of accounts receivable. And isosolve natin yung same problem kanina using the approach of percent of accounts receivable. Ang assumption is 
Ang allowance for doubtful accounts is 10% of accounts receivable. And kapag percent of accounts receivable, meron lang certain rate na multiply sa total accounts receivable para ma-determine yung allowance for doubtful accounts. Ang gagawin natin, kukumpitin natin ang doubtful accounts expense, allowance for doubtful accounts, tsaka net realizable value of accounts receivable. Number one, doubtful accounts expense. Para ma-determine ang doubtful accounts expense, kukumpitin muna natin yung required allowance for doubtful accounts. And, and accounts receivable is 1.2 million times 10% allowance for doubtful accounts. So, that is 120,000. And yan, yan yung required allowance for doubtful accounts. Balance sheet approach. So, lahat accounts receivable times yung percentage allowance for required allowance for doubtful accounts. To compute the doubtful accounts expense, kailangan natin consider yung beginning balance ng allowance for doubtful accounts and that is 10,000 pesos credit before adjustment. So, 10,000. And ang required allowance is 120,000 credit. Therefore, naragdagan siya ng 110,000 pesos. To record yung adjustment for allowance for doubtful accounts, debit doubtful Accounts, expense, 110,000 credit allowance for doubtful accounts, 110,000. So, sagot sa number 1, under percentage of accounts receivable is 110,000 ang doubtful accounts expense. Requirement number 2. Allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of period. So, ang sagot is yung 120,000. Number 3. Ang requirement number 3 ay kailangan natin ma-determine ang net realizable value of accounts receivable. So, kailangan natin ma-compute ma yung AR net. Total accounts receivable is 1.2 million. Less Allowance for doubtful accounts, 120,000. Therefore, accounts receivable at net realizable value, 1.2 million minus 120,000 equals 1.80 million. Pesos, accounts receivable at net realizable value, 1.8, 1.08 million pesos. So, merong advantage and disadvantage yung paggamit ng percent of accounts receivable approach. Advantage niya is very simple to apply. Kasi sing, kukun, kaila, ang kailangan lang natin is yung total accounts receivable times the percentage of uncollectible Accounts, simple multiplication lang. Ang disadvantage niya is the experience rate may be excessive or inadequate. Meaning, yung percentage na ginagamit, may possible na sobrang laki ng percentage or kulang ang percentage. And kapag may mali sa percentage, mali na rin ang allowance for doubtful accounts and ang accounts receivable is possible na hindi siya fairly stated sa balance sheet. So, kagaya nito, 10% yung sa example and nakabase lang siya sa total accounts receivable. Unlike ng AR or ng accounts receivable aging na may analysis na mas, mal, mas mahaba yung date ng past due ng receivable, mas malaki yung percentage. Sa percent, sa percent of accounts receivable, certain rate lang or fixed rate lang na para sa buong accounts receivable na possible na pwede siyang excessive or inadequate. So, sa problem na sinolve natin kanina, excessive, parang excess, parang excessive ang allowance for doubtful accounts na masyadong malaki na 120,000 pesos. Okay, dun tayo sa third approach. 
percent of sales method or percent of sales approach. A certain rate is multiplied by the amount of sales at the end of the period in order to get the doubtful accounts expense. So kanina, ang pinag-multiply natin ay rate times the accounts receivable. Sa percent of sales naman, the rate times the amount of sales and yung amount na mako-compute natin is yun yung doubtful accounts expense. So, net sales times the percentage rate, the percentage equals doubtful accounts expense. Illustration, the following accounts are gathered from the ledger. We have the accounts receivable, sales, sales return allowance for doubtful accounts of 20,000. Doubtful accounts are estimated at 1% of net sales. Determine the following. Doubtful accounts expense, allowance for doubtful accounts, tsaka net realizable value of accounts receivable. So, sa number 1, to compute the doubtful accounts expense, net sales times the rate equals Yun yung doubtful accounts expense. Kapag nakabase sa income statement account, ang percentage, ang compute natin ay doubtful accounts expense. Kapag naman nakabase sa balance sheet account, ang compute natin ay yung required allowance for doubtful accounts. So since na ito ay income statement approach, doubtful accounts expense. Net sales, the sales, the, the sales is 5.50 million minus the sales return 50,000 times 1%. Therefore, doubtful accounts expense ay 50,000 pesos to record the entry for doubtful accounts expense. Debit doubtful accounts expense 50,000 credit allowance for doubtful accounts 50,000 pesos. Number one, ang answer 50,000. Number two, allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of the period. So, kukumpitin natin ang allowance for doubtful accounts ending balance. Okay. Gamit tayo ng t-account, allowance for doubtful accounts. Allowance for doubtful accounts ay 20,000. So, hindi binanggit kung debit or credit. So, ang assumption, normal balance ng allowance for doubtful accounts ay credit. So, sa credit natin ilalagay yung 20 thousand and meron tayong journal entry sa number one doubtful accounts expense credit allowance for doubtful accounts so may nag credit na allowance for doubtful accounts so ire reflect natin yon sa t account therefore total allowance for doubtful accounts at year end ay seventy thousand pesos so number two answer seventy thousand allowance for doubtful accounts Number three, number three, net realizable value of accounts receivable. Accounts receivable ay ito, 1 million pesos less allowance for doubtful accounts, 70,000. Therefore, accounts receivable at net realizable value ay 930 thousand pesos. So, yung paggamit ng income statement approach and mer ay meron din siyang advantage and disadvantage. Pag gumagamit ng income statement approach, ang advantage niya is matching principle is followed. Meaning, nare-recognize natin yung expense na corresponding sa sales. Since na sales ang ginagamit natin sa pag-compute, ng doubtful accounts expense. So, na-apply natin ng matching principle. Disadvantage, allowance for doubtful accounts may be excessive or inadequate. Possible na mangyari na kulang or sobra ang allowance for doubtful accounts kasi nakabase sa sales. 
what if sobrang laki ng sales? So, ibig sabihin, possible na sobra-sobra yung allowance for doubtful accounts. So, kapag naman sobrang liit ng sales, meaning kukulang ang allowance for doubtful accounts ni Liet. So, disadvantage siya kapag ang sales ay nagpa-fluctuate nagpa from time to time dahil nagiging, may possibility na magiging excessive or inadequate ang balance ng allowance for doubtful accounts. So, recall tayo. Kapag balance sheet approach, accounts receivable, aging of accounts receivable, and AR percent of AR approach. Kapag balance sheet approach, accounts receivable times rate, yun yung required allowance for doubtful accounts. Kapag namang income statement account ang ginamit, net sales times percentage, doubtful accounts expense ang makukuha nating amount. 